so today I'm announcing that I'm running for Allegan County Prosecutor. I got my little cheat sheet here. I like to talk uh, contemporaneously, but I do have notes so that I don't miss anything. Uh, I've been an attorney for 33 years and uh, in private practice for the last uh, 31 years. So for the first two years, I will, first year I was a clerk for Judge Corsilia uh, in the Allegan County Circuit Court who recently passed away. And then uh, I was a clerk for the Michigan Court of Appeals. So I did that for a year, and then I started my own practice here in Allegan. I've been practicing in Allegan ever since. Um, I do, my, my position here is really called a general practice of law. I do, the majority of my income comes from criminal law work. I've been doing criminal law for 31 years. I practice in Allegan, Van Buren, Ottawa, Kent County, uh, Barry County. Uh, so I, I have pretty much all of the surrounding counties where I've been involved in criminal cases. And in doing that, I get to know how the prosecutors uh, in other counties work and how their offices perform and how they function. So I've got a well-rounded knowledge of other prosecutors in our, in our southwest Michigan area. Uh, and of course, I do a lot of stuff here in Allegan, so I get a very first-hand view of what has happened here in Allegan. I have seen some troubling things in Allegan County, and part, that's part of what I'm going to talk about, and part of why I'm running for prosecutor. Um, in fact, there, I've seen so many things that have been run poorly, and there's a, a stunning level of incompetence in our prosecutor's office right now. And I'm going to talk to you about several of those things before I talk to you about what I'm going to do uh, to fix it. Um, my, my opponent was first appointed by Marge Baker to the spot of prosecutor. Then she got elected two years later and then four years later. So she has been prosecutor for about seven or eight years now. In that time, well, let me back up. In 25 years as, I, as an attorney in Allegan County, or the last 25 or 30 years before Myrene became prosecutor, maybe a handful of prosecutors quit, four or five, uh, over 25 years. But it, since Myrene Cook has become prosecutor in 2018, there have been 17 assistant prosecutors that quit. It used to be that a prosecutor in Allegan was a, 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 a career job, and, and you would stay here until you retired. And that is no longer the case. Every single prosecutor that was a pros assistant prosecutor that was in the, the, the um, prosecutor's office when Myron Cook took over has retired or resigned, not retired. They've just resigned and gone to other counties, gone to other jobs. Uh, the only person that's still there when she first got appointed is, uh, is the chief assistant prosecutor. She was immediately made chief assistant. So she's the only one that remains. And since then, I think there were seven or eight back then that quit and since then even people that got hired to replace the people who got who quit have now quit so it's it's pretty it's pretty stunning I guess is the right word for it because it's so unusual and what happens when you lose prosecutors that have been here for 20 years or 30 years they have a level of institutional knowledge of what they've done and what they're doing they know the courts they know the attorneys they know the referees they know the the police they know they, they have so much institutional knowledge. So when you lose someone that's been here for 20 years, you have lost a great deal of information that's hard to make up. And, and so to put that into perspective, in the last three or four years, right now, this, this year, the prosecutor's office is losing uh, almost or maybe over 75% of their district court cases, which means they win 25% of their cases. If you're a prosecutor's office and you aren't winning 90% of your cases that go to trial, you have done a terrible job. And now we're not, we're not only not winning 90% of the cases that go to trial, we're winning 25% or less of the cases that go to trial. The circuit court cases are similar. They, they are winning about, I think, less than 50% of the circuit court cases that go to trial. And again, that's stunningly inefficient when you think about how much money and how much time and how many resources are, are, are put into each case whether it be in district court for misdemeanors or, fel or circuit court for felonies, there is a huge amount of money invested in trials. And for the county, too, they have to pay jurors and they have to pay the jurors to come in. Um, and for, for our prosecutor's office to lose time after time after time, that's part of why I'm running. Um, but that's, that's only one of the things. Like right now, when Myron took over, and I should say my opponent, I guess that's the, the appropriate thing to say, her budget was $1.2 million six years ago. Her budget now is $2.1 million. 
So on top of almost doubling her budget, her results have plummeted. So you spend a lot more money for a lot less results. And that's what's going on right now. That is happening right now. We have, we have doubled, almost doubled our budget for the prosecutor's office while losing prosecutors and losing cases. And if people that are not inside the system, that don't practice criminal law like I do day in and day out, they don't see this. And that's why I'm running. I have a nice life. I don't need to be a prosecutor, but I want to be a prosecutor. That's the difference because I think that for Allegan County, it's, it's a much needed change. We, I would stop wasting money and start winning cases, start training the people under me to be better prosecutors. And then to have the discretion right now, the prosecutors, the assistant prosecutors that are losing the cases, they have no discretion. They're told what they can and can't offer the, the defendants. So you might have a lousy case, but if you're an assistant prosecutor in times past, you'd say, okay, we'll take this drunk driving and make it an impaired, or we'll take this charge and make it a lesser charge. They don't have that discretion anymore. They can't do it. And so what happens is cases that shouldn't be tried are being tried, and they lose. And they lose over and over and over again. So it's, it's not necessarily the assistant prosecutor's fault when they're hamstrung and they don't have the authority to make decisions on cases that aren't as good as they should be to take to trial. So despite the huge budget increase, the results have plummeted. So you get a, an astounding increase in budget and a, an astounding decrease in actual results. If, um, so, so for example, I want to just give you an example of one quick case, and I'm, I'm going to be try to be quick because I know you guys have things to do, and I do too, but uh, there was an uh, Allegan County deputy who was involved in a high-speed chase. And um, someone pulled out in front of him, and there was an accident, and unfortunately, someone died. And the state police were called in. They did an investigation. The state police cleared this gentleman and said that he, he followed the, the right protocols, and it was an accident. Um, Ms. Myrene, my opponent, chose to prosecute him to, with a, a motor vehicle violation causing death. She chose to prosecute him. Now, when you have a, an Allegan County deputy and you're the Allegan County prosecutor, what the first thing you should do is punt. You say, I'm not going to, I'm going to recuse myself from this case because I'm too close to it. I don't want there to be an appearance of bias if I say there's no charges. I don't want there to be a, any kind of appearance of impropriety. But what happened? She didn't recuse herself. She chose to prosecute an Allegan County Sheriff's deputy for that offense. The case went to trial. I watched the trial. He was acquitted. He was acquitted because they brought Allegan County experts, and the experts had to say he followed the protocols. So he was acquitted. But here's the thing. This is why there's some stunning incompetence in Allegan County. The prosecutor has maybe irretrievably harmed her relationship with the deputies department, the, the sheriff's department, and the deputies. If you're a deputy and your own prosecutor prosecutes you in really a case that shouldn't have been charged at all, what happens? And so now she's harmed her relationship with the sheriff deputies. And one thing that law enforcement has to do is you have to have the backs of your, your cops, your good cops, your police officers that go out every day. And if you are a prosecutor and you start prosecuting your own people, you, you hamper the morale, not only of the deputies, but of your own office. And that's one of the things that just happened. In 2020, I wrote an article, an editorial called The High Cost of Myrene Cook's Ambition. It is right over here. And, and if you can, you can get it and you, re, you can read it. I said four years ago that Myrene Cook is intentionally overcharging cases, not letting them settle so that the docket would get overcrowded so that there would be another judgeship created in Allegan so that she could get the judgeship. I said that in 2020, and I look a little bit like Nostradamus now because that is exactly what has happened. The, the, case, the case, the docket, not, there's not more cases. In fact, there's less cases. Less domestic cases, less criminal cases, but none of them are getting settled. And the, and the reason that is is so that the circuit court could say we need another judge and so that Myrene could become that judge. Now, one thing that's different between me and Myrene is I want to be the prosecutor. 
when Judge uh, Cronin quit about six or seven years ago, Myrene applied for the judgeship. And that was when Robert Kingus, Roberts Kingus, uh, he became judge. And then Marge Baker appointed Myrene to the prosecutor spot. Well, Robert Kingus only made it uh, three or four years, and he just unexpectedly resigned uh, this past year in 2023. Well, guess who applied for that judgeship? Myrene Cook. Now, she believed, I think the fly in her ointment of her plan that I said in 2020, her plan was to become judge. I think she planned on a Democratic governor losing and having a Republican governor so she could get appointed to that judgeship. That didn't happen. Gretchen Whitmer won re-election, but she still believed that a Democrat would appoint her to that judgeship, which either means that she has kind of a more liberal bias than a typical Republican, or she, I, I don't exactly know why she thought a Democratic governor would appoint her, but she applied. That's the point. Every time there's been an open judgeship, she applies, which means she really doesn't want to be a prosecutor. She's using the prosecutor's office as a stepping stone to become the next judge. And I said, that's not that is not what I'm doing. I want to be the prosecutor. I'm not going to be looking to move to become the next judge. Finally, for those of you who followed me, I lost the last election by 17 votes out of 18,000. Um, it was the last uh, township to come in was Fillmore Township. Oh, and there was a... The, there was a... a, a a recount done and it came out that the ballot box the ballots were broken the seals were broken after the polls closed but before the results were ascertained which happens to be a felony and uh, so the I filed a complaint with the Michigan Bureau of Elections and they they referred it to the Michigan State Police for a felony investigation for election fraud in back in 2020 I just sent in another Freedom of Information Act request which is right here and the, the AG's response is right next to it. They would not give me any of the information because there's still an ongoing criminal investigation to the 2020 election primary in Allegan County. So there's still a felony investigation as to, and I have a video, and we're going to post it, of uh, the, the township supervisor for Fillmore admitting what they did. So there's a lot of things that have gone on in Allegan County that I can't actually explain fully. Um, but I know that what I'm going to try to do is bring integrity and transparency and accountability and fiscal conservancy to, to this, this county because I don't believe the prosecutor's office budget needed to, needed to double in the last six years. So I've been a private practice attorney for 31 years. I've been successful in what I do. I, I own commercial buildings. I've been successful in running those. I've, com I've committed finances and time and resources to Allegan, the community. Uh, and you'll see if, if you look at the push cards, and you can take them as many as you want, hand them out, give them to your friends. Um, I am very committed to our community and have been for years and years and years. I know how to run successful businesses, and I think that means I know how to run a successful office. And so if you look at what I've done, I think that my commitment is that I don't want the prosecutor's budget to double. I'm not there to build an empire. I'm there to successfully prosecute cases that should be prosecuted and to make the office streamline and run efficiently and win. That's what I want to do, and that's what we're not doing right now. Um, I, in fact, I, I kind of anticipate a chilly reception from the Board of Commissioners because Jim Story is the head of the Board of Commissioners in Allegan, and he, was Myrene, he worked on Myrene's campaign as a paid uh, person in Myrene Cook's campaign. So... The Board of Commissioners is responsible for the budget doubling, and I don't see how Mr. Story gets around from, around, away from the responsibility of having, having the responsibility of overseeing an office that's budget has doubled and results have plummeted. I'm a staunchly pro-life guy. I've been pro-life for years and years and years. I'm a member of the NRA, the Golden Eagles, in fact, and I'm a member of Gun Owners of America, and I will defend Second Amendment rights for every law-abiding citizen in this county. That is what I do, and, uh, and that's what I believe. And I will, I will defend the Constitution in this county. I think there have been times when it hasn't been defended, and I'm committed to doing that. So thank you for coming. I am uh, committed to being the next Allegan County prosecutor, 
and I appreciate and I'm humbled by your, your support and being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.